Get your open. You're gonna. You're. You'll do your open. Like the okay. camera. All right. Here we go. What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Today is the day after my boy done one red crest, three hundred thousand dollars in the title of champion, dude. I've never yes. been so dang proud of you, I appreciate dude. It, buddy. Thank Truly, you. Uh, could not happen to a better guy. This guy works his tail off, and this is something that I mean, it's like it's like when you're you're like your brother. Like I feel like you're my brother. Like, oh you know my what I'm gosh, saying? man! Like, and I feel like seeing you do that. Like my obviously, man, he hopped on stage yesterday, and I was like, I was giving him a hug, and I was like, dude, I love you, bro, dude. I I like, yeah, it's I mean, real. it's a special moment. It is. You know, I was there through the many, many wins. <laughs> I mean, many Elite Series wins. All of them. I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, uh, no, it's, it's awesome to see you on top. I know I was pulling for you yesterday. You, I didn't buy it. Listen. I didn't give it to you. Hey, I was no. not giving it up. Trust no. me. I was like, I'm coming for you, DC. Yeah, right. But this is the thing. We're going to break down how practice went, what we caught some of our fish on. There's a lot of different things that play on this body of water, but there's really only a couple of things that worked for me this week. We're going to find out what worked for DC right now. So, so I'm going to start with the champ. The champ's got to start this off like, you know, obviously we had one day of practice. One day. One day of practice to, to, to cover this ginormous lake behind us. Ginormous. <laughs> ginormous. <laughs> oh, this is a big joker, man. All right, so here's the deal, guys. So uh, we got, we had one day of practice. I'm going to tell you kind of how my practice went. I'm going to hear it. 90% of my practice was idling looking because... You got to play into the weather. Like, keep in mind, guys, we had like two days to prep and rig rods, and like, you ain't got a lot of map study and all that. I mean, I know like you fall, I don't really know it near as well as Jacob and all that. I mean, he hoisted a trophy here last year and all. So, but uh, my whole plan was, all right, look, the weather is developing throughout the week. Mm -hmm. If I had a prediction, you know, we get there, and, and, and as fishermen, we always try not to have preconceived notions. Absolutely right. Wouldn't you agree? I one hundred percent. The key is, is like when you look at the weather, you always try to prepare for what's to come. Right. And fish ahead, you can get in front of the bass a little bit because you want fish that are coming to you. You always hear that, like yeah. you know, and that's they're an coming to term. me. They're coming to me. They're coming. They're coming to him. Yeah. Well, this is the thing though. When you look at the weather, when we literally got the, when we got on the call, it said, "Hey, Red Crest was going to be here on Lake Eufaula." Yep. Um, and all the stuff that went down in Texas, and they had to move it last minute. Like it was like, oh my gosh, it's gonna be a full moon. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be 70 degrees, warming we're gonna be trend. Like, sight fishing. like we're gonna be looking at them by the end of the tournament. Like yeah. by Friday, yeah. it was pretty much in my mind, like, yes, I could probably catch them offshore for a few days, but the preconceived notions of me, you know, winning here out there offshore, I'm like, I didn't want to get locked in either. Yes. In the same yes. way. So yes. you spent a lot of your time on offshore. My my practice was very similar because this is the thing. In practice, with only one day of practice. It's so much easier to go to the bank than to go try it, to figure it out offshore. It draws you in. You can figure, but this is the thing, you could figure out the bank quicker. Yes. Because this is the thing, so many things were changing in practice. When we got out there, water temperature was like 52. Yes. Water's 52 when the we first The fish are in full-blown winter mode. Pre right, pre-spawn Hard winter. Hard pre-spawn. And we line. just had a crazy cold turn. Yes. A like cold, yes. like, Arctic blast. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, man, like in that, for me, like I caught one 12 incher in practice, my full day of practice. One 12 incher. That's all I caught. I caught it on a swim jig and I was like, eh, see, I don't think it's going down. So, so I idled, like I said, I idled, you know, 90% of my day. You know, we had like 12 hours. I probably idled for 10. I know I did. Yeah. And when I say idling, you know, I idled, I don't know where you idled. I never even saw you in practice at all on the lake. But I, I, I tried to idle the main stretch because you got current. I love fishing current. And in this format, if you find a school of fish, you can get well really quick. Absolutely. And, you know, I tried to find places like that, a hard place, even if it had spots on it or just somewhere. I love fishing out deep. Well, anyway, I didn't find that. And it was kind of trash. And I was like, dang. <laughs> so uh, I pulled up and I idled over a brush pile on like eight foot and I actually seen like two on it in like eight foot. Mm -hmm. And I was like, and the water was getting pretty dingy. I was like, huh. Turn around with spinnerbait. Do in there. Whop. Four pounder. I went, okay. 
So okay. then my whole idea was like, all right, this was pretty easy because I had active mm -hmm. target. Yep. Like a pan over there, and I'd see it, and it was like elementary. Beep. <laughs> see my spinnerbait fall down, and I wouldn't even let it hit bottom because I know I'm going to get hung up. And it's like I let it fall down about where the tip is, and I'm sitting there reeling him, and I see him jet out of it and just eat it. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. And uh, so I caught a couple on a spinnerbait. If you guys checked out the video for the practice deal, you saw those. Um, but I didn't really want to go do that because I knew this tournament was probably going to be one shallow. I thought that. I 100% thought that as well. I 100% thought that. Dude, it, it only made well. sense. It was 80 degrees three days in a row. I know. So fast forward to the first couple days of competition. Okay. You know, we had very limited practice. You said you had a pretty decent practice. I just, I only caught one bass. So I'm sitting here like, I don't know what's gonna go on. Um, tell me a little bit about what went down and transpired those first couple of days. All right, so here's the deal, guys. We're giving you guys all the nuggets. The goods. We're giving y'all the goods. This uh, is we gotta give it to them? Come on, DC. Oh, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to. I'm really though, gonna man. give y'all this. Like I'm giving y'all nuggets. Oh my god. I'm gonna give it out. We got to. All right. It's fair. We got to give these guys something. I mean, they they are true. Our faithfuls. We truly appreciate y'all. So we got to give you guys some. It's all I can do not to just cut this interview and go bust one. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's go back to the show. All right. Here we go. Um. So, so first so, couple of days. First couple of days. So. Practice kind of was kind of. I didn't really know what I had. You know, I caught one or two doing that, and I didn't want to catch them all. And I marked like 25 places, and I said, "All right, well, I'll go run this." So I started fishing brush early. I threw a spinner bait on like a little hard place, and then I threw it on some brush, and I and I ended up catching one like a four pounder. I went, "See, so like, yep, okay, here we go. Let's keep going." I never had another bite for six hours. <laughs> And the score tracker was not ding at all. I had seven <laughs> pounds. I remember seven, this. I had mm -hmm. seven pounds even, I think, for literally six hours straight. And it is, you know, lines in, lines out yep. at four o'clock. Yep. This first day of competition, I had 30 minutes left. I made a, like a five mile run up, and I'm going to give you all the name of the creek, Cheney Hatchie Creek. I ran up to Cheney Hatch. He giving up the juice. I'm giving up the juice. Come on, God. Jesse God. I'm not giving y'all that. <laughs> I ran up to Cheney Hatch and I said, all right, I'm going to run up here and uh, next derby, Jacob being Cheney Hatch. Hey, no, I will not. not. Yes, oh, no, he will not. Anyway. Swimming. <laughs> uh, so I ran up there and I said, all right, because I've caught some on swim jig in there. A lot of people fish around that area, barber and all that. Mm -hmm. So I ran in there and I said, all right, it's hot. The water's temps rising. Let me go in there swim jig. Dude, my first grass mat I pulled up to three pounder trash it. catch it though literally my next cast another three pounder and they had red eyes and I went huh oh. and like and, and, and feel you guys what's red eyes mean and they're spawning they're slight they're spawning they're, they're starting spawning. to get up they're there. starting to get up there to spawn they get them they get the love in their eyes so anyway yeah. um long story short I ended up catching three and I had like five swim jig bites so like two non keepers and I'm like Dude, they're starting to ease up up at this this section of the lake. I said, it might go down on Tuesday. Well, on Tuesday, it did not go down. <laughs> it did not go down. <laughs> it didn't go down. I, I, oh, you caught that five-pounder off the giddy, and I was like, God. No, nah, see, though. that was like a false hope. I was like, he caught a five. I was I like, caught dude. him on a square bill. And I don't even throw square, I square bill. I literally, I swear you, I bet you I've heard DC say square bill, like catching a bass on a square bill. I don't throw Never in my life. Ever. I don't throw square bill. You caught him on a square bill. I caught him on a square bill. So I, <laughs> I caught him on a square bill. <laughs> so the only reason I tied a square bill on is I was there was like a little rock, little point right there. And I said, well, I'm going to crank going in, and then I'll swim a jig, and then I'll come back out and whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, right when I like turned the corner, there was this little rock edge that run out, mm -hmm. and it had a little deep water around it. And I said, let me throw a crankbait on that. Literally, my first cast, I catch like a 5'11 or something. <laughs> A begging. <laughs> Catch him, I'm like, boom, we're that's a good start. Yeah, we're locking in the cut almost. I had <laughs> I caught one more all day. One. A two pounder. Two pound zero ounce. I flipped him up in Barber Creek on uh and uh, the only mat in there on the right right there. Y'all know what mat I'm <laughs> the talking about. Give it all up. Hey, just give it all up. Just give it all up. Giving it all up. Here we go. I flipped it. I mean, y'all y'all going there and catch two pounder. Anyway, that mat on the right over there, I, I flipped him up in there and I was like, two pounds. Please be two pounds, please be he was two pounds. 
you find it? I made the cut in 19th place. And that was my first two days of competition. So let's hear yours. All right, so mine's gonna be a little bit shorter because I, I don't have all them crazy deals. Pretty much for me, I wasn't like, I like to fish freely and I practiced from the start of competition, running a lot of offshore stuff, whether it was rock, whether it was brush, whether it was hard spots. It just really just toward a combo, you know, whether I was on a spinnerbait, I had a deck, a deck full of rods. Right. And that was the thing is like trying to figure out each day. I feel like they constantly change on a body of water. They're always looking for something a little bit different. Maybe you would throw like one day they'll bite a swim bait, one day they'll bite a, a jig or shaky head or something like that. Right. So for me, really, it came down to two things. It was a jig. Uh, this jig right here, this is like a, it's actually a 916 sound jig, a little green pumpkin jig. I caught a five pounder day one on him. A first bite on that's a, a brush ball. Pretty little boy right hey, there. Hey, that's like pretty as I'll get it. That's got a good weed guard too. And then I would throw a finesse jig as well. And so these two right here really were the big players for me. 7.3, heavy action, 17 pound suffix line. And that, that 8.3 to 1 gear ratio, I like a faster gear ratio when I'm throwing a jig because them suckers bite it and use the hook. You, you have more, you, have, you can reel them in a little bit faster. Right, right. So that was pretty much a half ounce little finesse jig with a, a this is a little crack and crawl, a little small baby crack and crawl, and that's a bandito bug. So those were my one two punch, and, and, and I could not get them to bite a swim bait, a spinner bait. I never literally got a bite on spinner bait. You know what I think the fish were doing the first couple days? What's that? Well, we, like, we all know that. that we had a big cold front like ahead of this deal yeah. and then after that it warmed up and the fish had not caught up yet i think they were swimming they were in transition in between because like dude i fished deep the first day and i did not catch them like they they were just it's like they were leaving those areas I, yeah. but they wasn't up there yet it was it I'm was swimming a jig i'm fishing weird. everywhere i'm I, going I in between i'm going in out in out in out i'm like where are they at i know you know what i mean i know i know did you lay off on them on day one no, he, no, I caught, I caught two bass. I literally had three bites. I hooked one big one on crankbait and it come off, and that was it. So I thought you laid off. Now this is where things get interesting. Knockout round, okay? Knockout round. Okay, this is where this is where go. it all goes a little bit differently. Yeah. So let me hear knockout round. Obviously, we got to make top five. We were both in the same group. We had to figure something out. I'm pretty much like at that point in time, like I'm pretty much committed to the jig. I was catching them pretty good on jig, but I had a ton of different rods on my deck, swim baits, crank baits, you know, jerk baits, everything that I had just sort of like constantly trying to figure out. Cause this is the thing with active target, you can literally see the fish in those brush piles around yes. those hard spots. You can see them. So now you're like, okay, I got to figure out something they'll bite. Yep. So anyway, I want to hear how your knockout round went. I'm going to tell you how mine went. All right, guys. So I'm gonna, before the knockout round, I'm gonna give you guys a mentality deal, mm -hmm. okay? You gotta understand that you're fishing against this group of anglers, they're, they're, they're top notch, okay? You gotta analyze what you got, and you gotta, you gotta see if, that, that, if I can make this into a winning deal or not, okay? Mm -hmm. I know, I've always said this, I know I cannot throw a chatterbait better than Jacob Wheeler. I know I can't I can't skip a jig better than Randall Tharp. I can't go and throw a spinner bait better than all these other guys. I really it's very hard to separate yourself it fishing is. shallow unless you have a collision with like a wave of fish in an area. Okay? Yes. So like last year I fished this this the MLF Bass Pro Tour, the one you won. And I literally just found two hot pockets. Like not the ones you put in a microwave. <laughs> Two hot pockets. Two okay. hot pockets. Like <laughs> yeah. they were real hot. They were like pockets, like those pockets. Over there. <laughs> so they were pockets off the main lake, and I just had I, I for, like looked up into a couple pockets. Fish were mo waves were coming in. Mm -hmm. They were coming to me. Mm -hmm. So I, I I had a collision with them. I had a great tournament. Long story short. I did not have no collision with no bass on Tuesday. <laughs> I had one flipping bite. I had one lucky crankbait bite. <laughs> like, I had done fished up here in this dingy <laughs> water, but I knew things were changing. The weather was getting warmer. The water was clearing. Uh, Chaney Hatchie had cleared. That's why I didn't get no swim jig bites in there the following day and all that. So uh, I was like, okay, I got to switch this up. So knockout round. Knockout round. Oh, I know I'm being long-winded, guys. Hey, he, loves to he loves to go in detail, and I that's what I love about you, bro. <laughs> no, well, I'm not, I know I'm long-winded, guys, but I'm just trying to figure out. This, this right here is straight nuggets. So anyway, uh, knockout he round. He's giving the dang details. So 
knockout round, I said we're gonna switch it up. I'm, I'm, I, they, these fish are in transition. They're not up shallow yet. They're not out deep. They're in the middle. Mm -hmm. So I said, all right, I'm gonna run in this dingy. What's this creek called up here? Um, uh, Patula. Patula. Anyway. Patula creek. So I said, Patula was like one of the only muddy creeks left mm -hmm. on the lake, and I was like, all right, when in doubt, go find some mud. Let it be your friend. So I said, all right, this dingy. The, the fish, you know, traditionally they get they have to get shallow when it's dingy. So I go in there and I start fishing around, fishing around. Well, I catch like a two pounder pretty quick on like a spinner bait, and he was in like eight foot. And I was like, okay, on some brush in eight foot. Huh. Actually, some like crates or something on the bottom. I found it <laughs> on a spinner bait. Uh, I fished shallow and I got lured in. I went in there fishing again, fishing around. Dude, I remember you caught that one pretty early because I'm, I'm sitting, I'm yep. sitting there and I'm like, and that first period was slow. Van Dam caught a five pounder off the get go. DC caught a two pounder and then started the knockout round. Oh and so I'm like, gosh. all right, you know, you're always thinking about what the ang other anglers are doing. Van Dam's like, you know, he's churning and burning for, for sure. I've not seen him down the lake at all. Mm -hmm. DC, I don't know exactly what he's doing because that sucker is like, he's either swimming offshore, he's throwing it. You don't right know, tail. you don't know what's going on. So I caught that one on a spinnerbait and I got lured in. I went in there and I'm looking at the water temp and I'm looking at the water color and I'm seeing shad flicker. I'm like, dude, it's about to happen. Fish shallow, fish shallow. Dude, I have one bass at 10.30. Yeah, yeah. Like two pounder. I but said, literally only a few people were on score tracker though. Only a few and it was super slow. It was slow. And I was like, all right. I looked over at my camera guy, Rick. I said, Rick, audible, let's go. <laughs> whoop, 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 whoop. Audible, we're gone. Cranked up, run down the way, got in some clear water, and I had marked a brush pile down there when I was idling. And so you literally did like you did literally did Peyton Manning, Alamo, Alamo, or whatever, what's he called? Alamo? Is it Alamo or is it Omaha? Omaha, Omaha, yeah. Omaha, 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 Omaha. Omaha. You Omaha, yeah, Omaha, Omaha. Audible. Have you seen that so big I, coverage? I said, <laughs> Audible, let's go. Forget Audible. this. So I ran down there. I put all the big, big bright spinner baits and crank baits and all that up, and I'm literally pulling out like a shaky head and a jig. So I run down there to a brush pile. I idle over it. I actually see a couple of fish, and it was in like 10 foot, 10 or 12 foot. And uh, so I turn around, and I see the fish on active target, and they were kind of near the bottom of the brush pile, and I said, all right. So I picked up a jig, and I had a bandito bug, Guggenbait's bandito bug on there, and uh, blue baby. That, hey, that's my favorite. That's a, that's that a is really, that that's a really pretty jig right there. I always throw him. Uh, 17 pound cigar and a summit rod, 7.2 medium heavy. I fired in there, literally like my first cast, and went doink on. Can it be? <laughs> Can it be? <laughs> I got a bite. I set the hook, boom, rail me in a three pound eight ouncer. I said, holy crap. Anyway, I had a technical issue with my rod. <laughs> I set the freaking, hey, this, hey, this summer, go ahead and set the hook hard. I set the hook so seen. freaking hard, I ain't had a bite in forever. It's like I was tuna fishing. So anyway. So I had a, 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 a technical issue with the rod, but anyway, we can put that in there if we want to, I don't matter. <laughs> anyway, um, so I caught that fish and then I immediately saw them still in the brush and I said, all right, I reached in my box, I pulled out a jerk bait, okay? Initially I pulled out a, like, I'll tell you all what jerk bait it was, it was a mega bass jerk bait. And it was a regular running jerk bait, like it did not run deep or nothing. I fired it out there, I seen it on active target, I reeled it down and it was on like 10 foot. Started jerking it and I seen two of them swim up. And I said, oh my gosh, that's a couple big ones. And then I seen this other little guy come up and eat it and I was like, and I catch a pound and a half. And I went, huh. And that's when the light bulb went. Just like that. I left there, I couldn't get in the bite, I ran to the next pile. I literally have had this, the biggest community pile on the lake. It's down there off of a point. Fired in there, I catch a 311 on, the, on that jerk bait. And I went, okay, wheels are starting to turn. Long story short guys, knockout round. I did that the rest of that evening. The sun came out, they started biting. I got very fortunate the last part of that day, I pulled up on a community, another community pile. Fired in there and I caught a 38 and like a 32. Made the cut, I had 45 minutes to idle. I literally idled every little nub down the way down here in that same little area. I found everything that I could in 45 minutes. 
And we just got our fingers crossed for championship day. Gosh. That okay. That was the plan. I, I, this is so crazy about this whole thing. So that first period knockout round, I caught zero bass. Zero. I pull up on a place that I caught a four pounder the day before. Okay, yeah. on a jig. Yeah. And I roll over to there, and with that trait, you can literally see the bass out there a lot of times. And you'll see them, they can hide a little bit, but if they're big, you see the blob and a blimp. Blimp. <laughs> so I look over there and I see that, and I'm like, man, it's slick, it's calm, it's sunny, the water's cleaning up. And I'm like, man, I've not been able to get them to bite a jerk, but I've had a couple follow it out throughout the tournament because the water's real clear. I'm fishing down towards the dam. Yeah. The water's the clearest water down that way. I've never seen you all day. Just see, like, I was down that way, and so, like, I pulled up on a sneaky little place. And I pulled out, and I threw that jerk bait in there, and I reeled it down, I set the snap, snap, and I could see it, and all of a sudden, I went to snap, locked up. Locked up. Five, this is like the start of period two. I'm not caught a bass. DC's caught one. There's like four guys on the score tracker. Five pounder. I throw back out there. I see another one. I jerk down and catch a small one, like a 112, 115. You said, ah. And I went, ding, ding. Okay, so. <laughs> That's what I literally, and then I went to the next, and then went to the next pile, caught a two pounder. Then I went to a rock road. I started smashing them. And I was on, catching on a, jerk bait. on a rock row. Yes, because I pull them off it and I'd watch them. And so then I was like, mine. but this is the thing. This is the thing. There was a big tournament here the, ne the championship day. And so because of all that was going down, I knew in the back of my mind I could own everything that I had and probably wreck them today. Because. But I stayed on the banks trying to jerk down banks because I didn't want to give it away on live. On live. I didn't want to give it 100%. I stayed on that one place trying to catch every one of them there because I knew I probably wasn't going to get on stuff. And so I didn't want to give it up. I online. was on live straight giving up. See, you were giving fruit. up juice. Juicy fruit. <laughs> I was not. I was like, oh my I was gosh, thinking, there's going to be 78 boats out here throwing jerk bait on this stuff. <laughs> Literally. I so was I'm like, being like super, like, I never seen, I never saw a tournament boat in my knockout round. Okay, that was the third day we there against 10 boats. We had to make top five. Jacob was in my group. I never saw a tournament boat. So I caught them fish and I was just like, oh my gosh. Could I be this lucky? Because <laughs> that's very rare. You know? I said, man, could I be this freaking lucky? There were some locals in and out of there, but I caught them fish, and I did not know what I had. I had no clue, guys. I mean, I didn't. I, I literally just found the freaking piles in the tournament. You know what I mean? And uh, so let's fast forward to championship. Championship day. day. I want. I want to hear. It. Show me what you did. Oh my Obviously, gosh, you man. guys. Uh, I, I, I want. I want to hear from Sizzle on on, on the name. Champion Sizzle. Sizzle. Let's have a good. All right, guys. Doing uh, them for 300k. <laughs> all right, guys. I'm gonna keep this like kind of short and sweet. Yep. All right. So let's let's get let's talk a little bit about that active target. Talk a little right. bit about your setup. Talk so a little let's bit let's talk about. about uh, let's talk about active out. target. Okay. Active target is very new with Lawrence. So we, and, uh, there's live scope, there's active target, but act, we both have active target right both now. Both have active target. I, I, I literally have had this for two weeks or so, yep. and I have spent every day, guys, every day I can. My cameraman's back there, and he's been with me. You know, we've been filming, and I, we, we literally just posted a video, and I was using the active target and all that. But um, anyway, so I'm, I'm very, I guess you'd say fluent with it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I really understand it. You understand graphs in general. There's only a few people that I, and I feel like as professional anglers that truly get, not everybody gets it. A lot of you it has to do with settings and all of that, too. You get it. Like, there's people that use it to their advantage to the fullest, and DC has 100% always been one of them. So, like, Active Target, I've literally spent countless hours out there. I mean, you guys, I've, I've been out there in 35 degree weather just, like, learning that Active Target because that is a huge play. You've got to be on top of your game. And lo and behold, we're at Lake Eufaula, you know, championship day, and I and I have a plan set, and, and, and I'm going to stick with it, and I'm going to throw something I really love throwing. And uh, I caught him on a uh, deep diving jerkbait here. and a What pound line? 12 pound cigar line. Okay, I'm going to give y'all, I don't know what you throw on there, Jacob, but I'm going to tell y'all what I throw. I'll, I'll break mine down here. So this is 12 pound cigar fluorocarbon. I like 12. I used to throw 15. Okay. I used to throw 15, but 12 to me gets the bait down there a little better, a little bit deeper. Mm -hmm. It lets that bait suspend a lot more, okay? Heavier line, maybe make it float up, may make it sink. Mm -hmm. 12 is like a perfect mm -hmm. median for this jerk bait. And uh, yeah, I mean, y'all see the jerk bait I was throwing. Now, this is a deep version. Um, you know, crystal shad in color. A big deal with a jerk bait, a 6 3 to 1 reel for me. Really? You like to slow them? Like I like reel. a 6'3. 
Do you throw a seven? I throw an eight. I, I throw an eight. Totally different. Okay. The only reason I like I a six thirty one reel. Okay, I'm gonna pick. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stand up, guys. I'm gonna cast right over you and hook you. So when hey, I don't throw, catch them all now. So when I throw this jerk bait out there, when I reel, it's just got a good cadence for me. Yep. See, when I reel and I jerk, it's a good cadence. I see what you're saying. So I can go bop, bop, bop. And yeah, I, oh, there's a big one right there. There was no. a big one. Right there. <laughs> no. So like that's the that for me that's what I throw. Everything, everybody's stuff's different. Uh, that's a favorite rush six six rod, uh, jerk bait rod. I really like that rod for uh, very tight, close corners. You know what I mean? So you can cast it really easy. It, it's, you know, it's, it don't have a ton of backbone, but I can throw that jerk bait a long way with it. So it's a really good rod. This guy right here is having a heck of a day. He's, out he's here, chopping. He's out here chopping, having a good time. So this is the thing. I want to hear the final. Obviously, you guys, a lot of seen. You a lot of you saw what went down. Uh, you know, the final period. Things got super close. We actually went back and forth. I was in first for a second, and Burge was in second, and then Burge was leading, and then like, it, and then all of a sudden DC pushed out into the lead in the second, and when I was like, "You got a head." I said, "Here we go." I was thinking, I was like, uh, he's, about uh, to, "He's about to dump the gas." On top. <laughs> I knew it. He was about to. Uh, I, was, I, said, I, I, I was trying. Said, no. <laughs> no, I was like happy for you, but I was like, "He's about to hoist again." <laughs> <laughs> oh god! It was, it was that, I, that, but that, we're always pulling for each other. We are one hundred percent. Like, dude, even though like you got me down by eleven pounds, I'm like, DC catch another one because I'm like, I need to catch five more for every one you catch. No, I, but I, I was like, I want you to you be can't up there. Never count this sucker. No, out. ever. I was really worried about him more than anybody. <laughs> so like, you're like pulling for your buddies, just like. No. Please Make, don't catch me. Please don't catch me. <laughs> <laughs> You're a pretty awesome little deal. So, uh, anyway, long story short, guys, uh, I caught him on that jerk bait. I caught him on that jig. And I caught, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I brought this shaky head out here for you guys. You I catch caught, one on a shaky head? Yeah, I weighed one on him. Did you? I weighed one on a shaky head yesterday, and it was a two, 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 I think. Very valuable. Yeah, it was. I mean, you, hey, you, hey, that's woo. a uh, slim shake. And uh, slim shake. Guggenbait yeah. slim shake with a 3 16th ounce head, 10 pound line. Uh, hex rod, but like when I would see those fish in there, I would see multiple fish in there, and one would come up and eat it. And after you caught one, they got kind of funky. Absolutely, they were kind of like, Yeah, we don't know about this no more. So I fired that shaky head in there. You always try to clean up, that's a cleanup bait for you. So I ended up catching one on that. That was a very important deal, but um, you know, that's how I Go caught it. it. That's how you won 300 G's on a jerk bait, throwing it 12 pound line. The brush I was fishing was in uh, six to, uh, I would say five to eight feet. Yeah. I mean, connected to the bank. It had to be connected to the bank. These fish are staging up, okay? Uh, we can edit some of this stuff too. I don't want to be really long-winded. It's fine. Yeah, we got it. Um, what would you think, okay, we all know what those fish were doing, staging up. Do you think they had already been there or not? I think a lot of it was that what happened was this, it got so warm so quick that they could. I think some of them were already up there, and then they water they dropped back down like so it got so cold. Remember, so fish like it was warm. Out they looked like they were spawned out. Absolutely weird. And that was the thing. So like for me, like I caught them on on a jerk bait the last day. I had like seven jerk baits tied on, right? Uh -huh. And I could not get them to react to I don't anything. Have that many reels. <laughs> <laughs> I literally had like seven jerk baits tied up. I literally I did. And so I wasn't like exclusively fishing brush. I'd fish hard spots. And I actually caught a few on bait, like where I'd see them out in the middle and I would just pull them up. Oh, an active target. Yes, 100%. So that was my thing. But see, I switched it up because I wanted a painted, a painted one, which I was like, DC, you know, had one. I would throw a painted jerk bait with a shallower lip. This is a Loco Special 110. It's like three to five foot diver on fifth on 14 pound line because mm -hmm. uh, I wanted him to stay shallower. And I actually caught my biggest one on this bait right here. This is called Natty Light. I caught him right here. I've been two foot of water. Two Nat foot of water. Natty, Natty Light. Natty? Natty Light. Like Natty, Natty Light? Light. Natty Light. <laughs> it's called Natty Light. I love that. Hey, Richard, you a headache. Yeah, literally. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't get too many of them now. Um, so that was that was the one I would throw super shallow. And I caught oh, probably over half my weight on points and hard cover like rock okay. jerking this jerk bait right here. Okay. Then, if it, wa it got flat, calm, and still, I would throw this well, guy, translucent. a clear, translucent, you know, th and this is actually a new color that they have. I would throw him a little bit. That's pretty. And then, I also had a deeper diver in that Loco Special, 
Um, and I put a, and the thing that I like about the Loco Special, this is the deeper dive, this is one that runs like seven feet. Like, so a Mega Bass, very similar to Mega Bass, but it had, this one right here, I could put bigger hooks on and it not sink. Sink, that's a big deal. That's a huge dang deal. I did not mention Pause. that, guys. Go ahead. Pause. His camera's going to work. Corner and I caught two, bam, bam. Did you remember that? I do. It was like, boom, boom. <laughs> what did you say, Brody? My camera just like reset there, so I don't know. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to be honest with y'all. You know, top three, come to find out, all three of us were throwing a jerk bait. And this is this is the big thing. I think I think Michael Neal is using Garmin. Both DC and I are using Active Target. And, and I, you guys have seen, if some of you haven't seen, saw the video that I did with Garmin versus Laurent, um, Pan Optics versus Active Target. This is the thing, Active Target, you've run both. Yes. Active Target is not as crisp as Garmin, but you can see way further. I can and see my bait huge, further advantage of that. I can see my bait further. Mm -hmm. I can see the brush pile I can see the further. Fish further. I can see the fish mm -hmm. further. And that allows me to slow down key keys, like mm -hmm. other things other than baits. Everybody wants to know about baits and all tech. Yes. Where's you catching baits? Rolling up to that brush pile too fast and you blow it out, you ain't yep. catch nothing. Yep. But seeing exactly how far away it is, knowing if the fish are there or if they ain't, mm -hmm. throwing in there Seeing if you have a fish come up after your bait, I'm literally setting the hook before they even bite it because I'm seeing them. Dude, I'm like, he's like, about to eat it. He's about to they, eat it. When they get to this, here's a fish and here's your bait. And it's like, it goes like this. And then all of a sudden they go, and they go like, they go together. Mm -hmm. That is on. like. It's game on. Without that this week and not seeing those two fish react to my deal down here, I wouldn't have won this tournament. Yep. I'm just telling y'all, the active target, the forward facing stuff is. It's the next biggest thing since sliced cheese. <laughs> if that's sliced thing, bread. Sliced bread. cheese bread. and bread, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and you want a whole bunch of cheese. Cheese. <laughs> so uh, that's, that's a really big deal, guys. And uh, it, that, it was really it. cool to see how the tournament progressed as, the, as, as it went on. Because yeah. all this was straight mud. It was. The it was stained up. Tournament. And Had no it's... freaking clue that I was that we were, I was going to throw a jerk bait. And it was a pretty cool deal watching, seeing you. I, I literally thought I was the only person in the whole freaking field throwing jerk bait and I was like super quiet and sniffing. Like I wouldn't even go near nobody uh, local or nothing. I was like, I don't want nobody seeing this. Low key, I got people on live watching it. 100, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, I don't like, know that. I'm, I'm like, 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 literally. Like, Shh, don't let him was, see, don't let him like, see. Like literally when I see, I saw a couple, I saw like birds and I saw like like Michael Neal, I would not fish places because they were right there. Yeah. Yes, sir, I did not want to, like if you, I would see, I would not. You literally turn around, I see you turn around. Championship day, y'all no don't know this. Y'all do not know this. This is, <laughs> this is some funny stuff. But this is how you have to play the game. You have to play the game. 100%. I love Jacob just as much as anybody else. I roll around the corner of an island down this way. As soon as I roll around the corner, I see Academy boat. And he's literally like 80 yards from me, and there's like a place over here I want to fish. I have not seen Jacob all day long. I have not seen him. I've been further time. down. Yeah, I ain't seen Jacob in like three days. Mm -hmm. I was further down. So anyway, I roll around the corner. I see Jacob, and the first immediate reaction was, mm, I don't want to show him what I'm throwing. <laughs> I don't care if he knows where I feel like if he sees me. See like me on a big play. Yeah, but I. But that wasn't I did not, It's pretty obvious when you're sitting here going, eh, eh, yeah, we throw my jerk bait, right? you know. So I was just like, uh, uh, I ain't showing him this. And he, Woo! I, I, I thought he turned around. around. I was like, dude, that was weird. My DC just I turned around. I rolled around. I did not want to. Show I'm like, him. maybe you wanted to get on this place with like, cause they were fishing this deal like right next to these like cypress trees. And I remember you caught one there in your video last time. I was like, maybe you wanted to go around them cypress trees. No. And I, I run. I run right around the corner and I caught two, bam, bam. Do you remember that? I do. It was like, boom, boom. <laughs> What'd you say, Brody? So much for the 10 minute idea, but. It's gonna be about 25 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be a good turn. All right, all right, let's close it. All right. All right, there it was. There it was. We went into what, I mean, third place, first, 300 and almost $50,000 on this lake this week. Crazy. Unbelievable, bro. Congratulations. Good job. good job to you, too, man. I, mean, I had a good event. Place. That is not nothing hey, to joke about. I, I'm, I'm happy. Hey, listen, I'm you 100%. You won your grand. I did 100%. That's it was amazing a phenomenal week. week. Guys, oh. listen, do me a favor, mm. freaking, if you guys are not following my man DC on social, on his YouTube channel, this will also be on his YouTube channel. Y'all follow my man, J-Dub. Hey, Wheeler help me fishing. congratulate this, Wheeler oh fishing. my God. That's help me right congratulate here, him. Thank y'all, man. Hey, really put that thumbs up, this is so good, we out of here.